Hi, I'm Brian West, and I welcome you to the Frazier Kentucky Virtual History Museum. Before I begin, I first would like to give a special thanks to our neighbors across the street at the Louisville Slugger Museum for making what you are about to see possible. Now at the Frazier, I wear many hats, actor, teacher, tour guide, and this is one of the hats you'll be seeing me wear very soon. Hello, friends. My name is Jackie Robinson. It's October 1946. Just over a year ago, I met Brooklyn Dodgers President Branch Rickey. I was Mr. Rickey's top choice in what he called his noble experiment to integrate Major League Baseball. He warned me, there's virtually no one on our side, no owners, no umpires, very few newspapers. We can only win if we can convince the world that I'm doing this because you're a great ball player and a fine gentleman. This spring, I reported to Brooklyn's top farm club, the Montreal Royals. Mr. Rickey was confident the Canadian fans would judge me by my playing merit. Our first game was on the road in Jersey City, where I started at second base, the first black ball player to start in a minor league game in the 20th century. We all had a sense that history was in the making, and that the long ban against Negro players was about to come crashing down. It's the top of the third inning. When I swung and pitched with everything that I had, there's a crack with a rifle shot, and the ball sailed some 340 feet and disappeared over the fence. My first home run in a minor league game. At the end of the season, I was the league's top batter, and Montreal cruised to the Junior World Series. We faced off against the American Association's top ball club, the Louisville Colonels. The first three games in Louisville would be vital baseball-wise and extremely significant racially. Louisville turned out to be my most significant test of my ability to handle abuse. When I took the field out there, the tension was terrible. I had been booed pretty soundly before, but nothing like this. A torrent of mass hatred burst from the stands with virtually every move that I made. To make matters worse, I was playing terrible ball in Louisville. One for a 10 in three games. We dropped two of the three games in Louisville, so heading back to Montreal, we would have to win three out of four. In our first game on home turf during the Junior World Series, I had two hits driving in the game-winning RBI in the top of the 10th inning. In the next game, I knocked in a single, double, and a triple, and we came within one win of the title with a record crowd for game six in the Junior World Series. I was the only Royal to collect more than one hit as we beat Louisville two to nothing. We won a championship. After that final out, I rushed into the clubhouse. An usher came in and told me that there were fans waiting to say goodbye to me. I figured that there would be a few fans out there. The usher neglected to mention that there were thousands. They rushed at me, grabbed me, and hugged me, and put me on their shoulders, and walked me around the field singing and shouting. I finally broke away, got showered and dressed, came back out and found thousands more outside the ballpark. It sure was some season, and I know that not everybody in Louisville was against me. Shortly after the Junior World Series, I signed a contract with Louisville Slugger. They gave me two bats and a set of golf clubs for starters. They created this R17 model just for me, with my signature right here. I'm really looking forward to next spring when Mr. Ricky assured me that I'd be trading in this Montreal jersey for a Brooklyn Dodgers one. I don't know if I ever have it made. I know that I have a difficult road ahead of me, but I'm ready because I really believe that life is only important in the impact it has on other lives, and that I now have a rare opportunity not only to revolutionize baseball, but society too. Thank you very much. Jack would have a long career in the major leagues, playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers for nine years 
and winning the World Series in 1955. Eventually, he would be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962. His fight for civil rights did not end after his playing career. He attended the March on Washington with Martin Luther King in 1963. Then a year later, he would also attend a march here in Frankfort, Kentucky with Senator Georgia Powers. Now you'll be able to see such items as Georgia Powers' dress, among many other items at our exhibit, What's a Vote Worth? Suffrage Then and Now, opening soon here at the Frazier, Kentucky Virtual History Museum. So until tomorrow, from our friends here at the Frazier, as well as our partners at the Louisville Slugger Museum, hope to see many of you tomorrow um, from our Frazier family, uh, virtually, and very soon face to face. <laughs>